Before his election to the 10th district seat on the city council in 2005 by an overwhelming majority, he served in the California State Assembly starting in 1998. He was the speaker of the assembly from 2002 to 2004, known for saying it's not about me, it's about we. In fact, you cannot spell Wesson without we. We are pleased to bring to the dais our distinguished Los Angeles City Council President, Mr. Herb Wesson. I had to check the weight of tonight's award because I have a weight requirement in my contract or what I, and so you guys are right on point. I can lift that without injuring myself. Let's give all tonight's honorees a round of applause because they, they, they truly, truly deserve it. This is really not my speech. I just want Maria Elena to think that I wrote one. <laughs> I get here and she says, be funny. I considered trying to be funny, but I didn't see enough wine or alcohol being circulated, so I think we may want to take another approach. But I, I do want to say to each and every one of you that uh, uh, Maria Elena and I are planning a wedding. Yeah, I mean, is that not worth a round of applause? We are prearranging the marriage of her granddaughter and my grandson. So let's, so all we have to do is wait 20 years from now. Coming from a hardworking family, full of love, well educated, Mount, uh, what was it, uh, uh, St. Mary's, a law degree from People's College of Law, a special magic about her that brings people together and this ability that she has to influence individuals. She could easily be counting her millions of dollars that had she chose a different way I guarantee you she would have made. But she chose a long time ago to change thousands of lives. For her, that was worth millions. And she did it the hard way. She joined a struggling labor movement uh, at the time. It was an organizer, worked herself up to become a head of one of the local unions and then became the leader of arguably the most powerful labor organization in this country. People didn't know if she was gonna succeed. She did not surprise me when she became phenomenal. And where people from all over this country would come to her and say how and why. I mean, she asked me to be funny. But she was never funny when she sat down for labor negotiations. She was never funny when she was sitting in a room of bigwigs that wanted to undercut the working people of this city and this county and this state. She wasn't funny then. And she wasn't funny when she decided to move on to reunite with Unite Here so that she could touch the lives of individuals that truly need guidance. You talk about civic engagement. Civic engagement 
comes with civic education. And she has spent her entire life empowering individuals to understand how the system works and the things that they can do to try to get the things that she wants. If you are lucky and blessed in this life, you'll have a lot of friends. But if you are truly blessed, you might have a handful of people that you love. A person who has always been with me, and I'm not just here tonight because she has always endorsed me for anything that I've run for. I'm appreciative, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here because this is personal for me. She's one of the greatest human beings that I ever met in my life. And any of the headlines that you may have heard about her being this mean and tough, she knows how to motivate people and educate people. That's why she was so influential. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to bring my dear friend, Maria Elena Durazo to the stage. Please give her a round of applause that she deserves. If you think about all of the lives that she has changed, I will always love you. Wait, wait, wait. Let me go pick up this. That's your theme music. She says, "What's that's your theme music. I would have chosen something else. Like too hot. So, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, Maria Elena Terrazzo. I'm supposed to be Let's try some further good. Don't need to kill another over a neighborhood. All right, thank you, Herb, my friend, uh, president. Um, thank you to everyone who stayed through uh, this evening uh, for sticking around. Uh, thank you uh, at the Institute for connecting the legacy of Governor Brown to us today in 2015. President Covino, uh, for your friendship and our new friendship, uh, Rafael, uh, thank you so much as well, and uh, the other honorees and the Brown family. You know, I live a very privileged life because every day I get to work with remarkable people. Their jobs, cooking, cleaning, washing dishes, serving food, may seem quite ordinary, but their stories, their dreams, and their willpower are absolutely extraordinary. There are few experiences more powerful than watching an immigrant who walked across the desert to come here, walk door to door in a political campaign here, and then walk into her polling place to vote here. You know, when we started building uh, a movement uh, to empower immigrants in Los Angeles, we started with a very simple premise. The new immigrant voter had a deeper appreciation for civic obligation than those of us who were born here, and that they therefore represented the best hope for our future. It was in the early 1990s, and the clock was ticking because it was soon going to be five years since President Reagan signed the amnesty law. And millions of immigrants would begin to qualify for naturalization. It was a moment in history. I was blessed to be 
with a small group of people who saw it coming, and we prepared and prepared and prepared. But none of our work would prove as impactful as the 1994 ballot box assault on immigrants, Proposition 187. You remember Kathleen. Just as we were working to inspire newly eligible immigrants to become citizens and engage in civic life and politics and become a force for change, for good, and for their kids, along come our opponents with a gift. Proposition 187 was about the politics of fear and exclusion. Its fundamental message to the hardest working people in California was, you came here for free stuff. I know you've all heard about Latino pride, but I gotta tell you, and our opponents have learned over the last 20 years, you don't try to insult and intimidate the bravest people in this country. The refugee, the refugee from violence and deprivation who jumped onto a freight train was confronted by thieves who carried his child, who went without food, who walked through the nights, who didn't know a soul, couldn't speak the language, who started as a day laborer and then washed cars and then dishes and joined our union and became a leader where he worked, an activist where he lived, a citizen whose vote has changed California. Few people understand that man or woman I just described isn't some story, it's millions of stories. And those stories led to electing a Latino mayor, a progressive governor, and an African-American president of the United States of America. So, sisters and brothers, ladies and gentlemen, that is civic engagement. That is social change. But it is also yesterday. Pat Brown said, quote, Nostalgia has never been a way of life in California. We have always been pioneers of vigorous, dynamic people who respect tradition but scorn the status quo. And I love that. Scorn the status quo. Thank you, Governor Brown. I know that you look down on us and would applaud today's debate about a $15 minimum wage. And that debate isn't happening because of some new enlightenment. It's because the immigrants who make less than $15 have become voters. And when you vote, you win. And that's what's great about America. Voters win. Underneath all the noise, all the posturing, all the so-called debate about immigration reform is a struggle for power. Because we know and our opponents know in America, when you vote, you win. So there are those who prefer a status quo where they can eat the food harvested by the undocumented farm worker, but never have to worry about farm workers voting to take over an, immigration, an irrigation district. They prefer to fly to Washington to lobby for their tax breaks, sleep in a hotel room that was cleaned by one of the 147,000 immigrant housekeepers, and eat a business lunch or dinner prepared by the 600,000 immigrant cooks, but never have to worry about those immigrants voting on their business, their tax breaks, their loopholes, or their offshore accounts. Those of us on the other side of this power struggle have much, much more to do. Yes, we should be proud of how far we've come, but ashamed of how much yet we have to do. There are 8.8 .8 million immigrants who are eligible for citizenship today. Today. If they were citizens today, we would not be watching comprehensive immigration reform 
wither in Washington. You know, demographics are said to be destiny. And given that every month, every single month for the next 20 years, 50,000 Latino youth will turn 18. It is easy to fall into the trap of believing that all we have to do is wait. I don't believe that. There's no autopilot for social change. I grew up in a farm worker family in the Central Valley, and I was coming of age as Cesar Chavez was coming into prominence. His message, si se puede, yes we can, inspired me. But there was something he said more often than si se puede. He said it when he trained organizers, such as my late husband, Miguel Contreras. He said it when he registered voters. He said it when he boycotted grapes. One by one by one. One by one by one. You move people by respecting each individual, each one. You build a movement. You turn workers into a union, immigrants into citizens, citizens into voters, one by one by one. I am always mindful in my work of what Maya Angelou said. People will forget what you say. They will forget what you do, but they will never forget the way you made them feel. I don't approach immigrant workers as though they are victims. My union's message to them is just the opposite. We are telling immigrants that we know they are brave. They were brave to come here, and we want them to stay here. And to the rest of America, we remind you that the last five words of the Star Spangled Banner, our national anthem, declare this country the home of the brave. And what could be better for America than welcoming our brave immigrants? There was no immigration movement in January of 1959, but had there been, Pat Brown's inaugural speech would have inspired us. He said, men must indeed have freedom to breathe the air of self-respect. Let us forge a program which will liberate our human resources. Si se puede, one by one by one. Thank you. I said, stand and shine the light on the young souls of the earth. Let it shine and illuminate the beauty of their world. We got to educate, not incarcerate. Thank you so much, Maria Elena. Um, on behalf of the Pat Brown Institute and Cal State LA, um, I would like to thank a lot of people tonight, especially our honorees and presenters. I don't know that I've ever heard a better group of people more eloquent. Let's hear it for all the presenters and all the honorees. I feel as much as anything that we're honored by these honorees. Uh, I think it reflects well on, on all of us in this room. On behalf of the Brown family and our staff and sponsors and all the people who helped out tonight and all of you who came, we thank you for being here. We thank our good friend Mark Brown uh, for being our MC this evening. It is our opportunity now to say good night and drive safely, and I hope we will see you next year. Thank you very much. Thank you.